Good evening. Welcome to Bellator Es Christus. My name is Aaron Kidena, and tonight's subject is how to make a home altar, how to make a place, a sacred space for God in uh, worship on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation, or if there are days that you just can't make it to Mass, whether it's bad weather or uh, other uh, unnatural obstacles that get in the way. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to explain multiple things what this altar looks like. Uh, because it's Lent, it's kind of toned down. So we're about two weeks away from uh, Easter. So let's uh, let's get into it. Okay. So right here, you can see we have our crucifix veiled. And the way mm -hmm. the altar is, it's in the east, it's facing east, word. The theological reasons are because our Lord will come from the east. He will come as lightning flashes from the east to the west. Um, so that, that's why we have it in the east. It's ad orientum, um, or ad deus, facing, uh, facing God. Uh, things that you need for a good worship, obviously... The Word of God, right here. This is uh, the the Kadena Family Bible. It is the Latin Vulgate, Jerry Rams translation on, on one side, and the uh, famous Latin Vulgate on the other side quite brilliant. Another thing to have is good uh, music. I, I have more music, but I just chose this because uh, this is the most traditional music I, also I, I could find. They are uh, they're good, uh, especially if you know how to sing, they are uh, very helpful in starting up home worship of the uh, of God if you can't make it to church. And there are legitimate reasons why you can't make it to church, uh, especially in this day and age. And depending on where you are, uh, not a lot of places are open due to COVID and everything. But that's hopefully changing. We'll see. Another thing you've got to factor in is good catechesis. Good catechesis and rosary for any kind of devotional you may want to do after the initial uh, worship of God is done in your house. Now you can either go and do uh, just do songs or you can just read from the Bible or you can do this. My missile for the traditional Latin Mass. This allows us to follow the Mass throughout the year. You can see you got June. July, there's August. It really helps to follow along if you can't make it to church with the church calendar. That way you know where you are for the rest of the year. And it actually uh, makes it easier to participate with the more universal church around the world. Um, so, another thing. I have to say is uh, going back to the catechesis. This one uh, catechesis right here says that the parents are the first teachers of the, their children. So we shouldn't necessarily be relying on the priests and the nuns and the Catholic schools to be catechizing our kids. We should be taking the number one interest of wanting to catechize our kids appropriately. 
uh, to make sure they adhere to the faith and love the faith the rest of their life and the rest is in God's hands. Um, another thing is the, the candles. As you can see, for the most part, the, the altar is stripped down for the most part, uh, or really toned down. I only have two candles uh, on and a crucifix, and obviously all these fantastic books here. Uh, pretty much what these do um, is help us be in the mindset of getting ready for the great festivities of uh, the Paschal Tide, which is uh, Easter, which is coming up. So as we get closer to Holy Week, we will strip the altar like they do on Holy Thursday. We'll first change the color to red, or you can keep it purple, depending on if you use Novus Ordo or traditional Latin Mass. But by the time you get to Good Friday, everything's stripped. And then Holy Saturday would be the time to start decorating it. Get a white or gold um, t uh, cloth. Maybe get some uh, flowers, and get some uh, holy relics uh, that you may have, or pictures of saints, or pictures of uh, sacred art of some kind, and you know, just stack stack it all over here, and maybe get some more candles, and uh, we'll uh, have a more appropriate, beautiful looking altar for Easter. So, again, uh, for us, we usually do uh, 40 days of white for Christmas, 50 days of, no, uh, 40 days of white for, uh, for Easter, 10 days for Pentecost, and then uh, it kind of gets a little bit more changed up throughout the rest of the year, such as like June is kind of mixed depending on how early or late uh, Pentecost is. Uh, we might have a little bit of green in there before we get into the fortnight of martyrs, which is two weeks straight of martyrs, which goes into the 4th of July. July is all red, dedicated to the sacred... Uh, uh, to the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. August is pretty much all all green, as well as September and October. And then, as we get into November, that's when we start getting kind of tricky because most of that month, I say most of that month, <coughs> is dedicated to the souls in purgatory, to, to the dead. So... That would be, our tablecloth would be black for the most of that month until you get to the end, which leads up into December, which sometimes Advent comes in as early as late November. Then we switch back to purple. So uh, so we, we don't really have any uh, pink or, um, or rose... Uh, color uh, cloths. We, would, uh, we don't have any blue for Mary, but uh, that might be interesting to get some. But uh, Keeping up with the liturgical calendar helps you to worship with the collective. Even though you may not be able to be there in person, you can at least join them uh, with your intentions uh, across the world, across your town, across your your city, uh, across your country, and, and who knows the whole world. Uh, the beauty about having a a altar, especially facing like this, is it's facing the wall. So if you get some more sacred art up here, then it can be definitely a good meditative tool to help worship God because sometimes uh, people can get in the way of God uh, and 
our sacrifice should be to God, not to each other necessarily. So, um, if you have, if you are lucky enough to have a priest uh, have mass in your home for whatever reason, um, like they used to do back in the days of the Roman Empire, then that is a uh, good thing to have, especially autoransom, because then you can make it more of a sacrifice and it's less of a meal. Now, you can say, well, you can say that the uh, that it should be more of a meal uh, or a, more of a community setting since it's a home. Well, there, there are issues with that. Some good, some bad, but uh, again, I think it's just appropriate to try to keep it God-centered as best we can. You know, we, again, we have the Bible. We follow along with the readings with this thing. So while the font is small in this book right here, we use the big book right here to match up with the readings of the liturgical year or feast day or um, whatever season we may be in. Again, also advocating promoting the family rosary as part of the worship of a Sunday or a holy day of obligation if you cannot make it to Mass for whatever reason. Uh, and there are legitimate uh, reasons. As the newer catechism right here would say, let's see if I can find it relatively quickly. It's under the third commandment. Yes, all right. So it is 20, uh, paragraph, for anyone who's wondering, paragraph 2183, it states, If for the lack of a sacred minister or other grave participation in the celebration of the Eucharist is impossible, it is especially recommended that the faithful take part of the liturgy of the word. If it is... Uh, celebrate in a parish church or another sacred space according to the prescriptions of the diocesan bishop or engage in prayer for appropriate amount of time per, uh, personally or within a family or with an occasion of others in a group of families now you may be wondering one second let me get my book back in here There it is. You may be wondering what is an appropriate amount of time of worship. Well, <coughs> if you uh, that factors within the liturgical year too. If you're in Christmas time or Advent or Lent, where readings might be a little bit longer, or um, then. Assessing how long a, a mass would be or a communion service <coughs> would be would be sufficient. Uh, I would think thirty minutes would probably be the bare minimum. Um, but if it's like something like Lent or going into Easter tide, uh, then you're talking about hour and a half, two uh, hours. Um, and that is just the worship part. Um, the catechesis part could take even longer. I mean, you could do, do 45 minutes, you could do an hour, <coughs> you could do half a day if you wanted to. The point is, what we're supposed to do on the Holy Days of Obligation and the, th uh, the days of uh, Sunday, all Sundays uh, throughout the year, is rest. Rest, learn about God, worship God, and be with family. Those are the chief things that all Catholics should be doing on any Sundays or uh, Holy Days of Obligation. If you're not doing that, then can you say, are you fulfilling the third commandment? Um, <coughs> again, you have to ask yourself that question. 
are we resting appropriately? Are we worshiping God appropriately? Are we doing <coughs> what we should be doing with our family uh, on any given Sundays? Again, catechize your children. Love your children. Catechize yourself, especially, especially if you're not knowledgeable about the faith, uh, as, as you should be. Uh, catechize your wife. Uh, catechize each other. Uh, read scripture. Um, something that kids really like, uh, too, I think, especially if you have kids that like to sing, is engaging in good, prayerful music, which is uh, things like Gregorian chant or uh, other sacred uh, uh, music and chants, like Eastern Orthodox music or Melkite right, music or, uh, you know, Anything that's going to engage and lift up the heart and mind to God is something that we should always keep in mind for our um, for our worship of God. Um, again, I know the bishop said that that the uh, the obligation is suspended for still.